The ever-popular slate. What the hell is it, and why do I have to do it? <laughs> I learned early in my career working with a coach by the name of Tom Logan. He's a director, a film director, and he teaches actors how to act. He's one of my biggest breakthroughs, really, for an instructor. Um, Tom taught us about slates because, I guess, in L.A., if if it, if the audition is big enough and there's enough people to go through. Sometimes they're looking through 300 people a day, if not more. In order to get through those kind, the, that amount of people, what they'll do is they'll fast forward from slate to slate to slate to slate to find the one that does something different. So what is a slate? Well, a slate to me is a second audition, or in this case, a first audition. It's the chance for me to showcase who I really am. Can you imagine if I introduced myself to you and said, hey, I'm Deb Monroe. Would you care? Would you think I'm not very happy? Would you think I'm maybe got some problems? You know, there's a lot of different things that you would think. But yet, listen to some of your slates. Deb Monroe. You don't care. There's no personality. There's no connection. There's no happiness. There's nothing there. Your slates are a chance for you to introduce who you are, to show how proud you are of who you are. How you got here is a journey in itself, so you should be damn proud when you walk in that room, and you should offer so much smile and invigoration to your name. Depending on what your slate is for, you can change it up. A lot of people ask, should I slate in character, should I not? I'll tell you right now, a lot of colleagues have different opinions on this. There is no right or wrong here, but for the most part, I would suggest you have a second chance at a second character. So be yourself for your slate, and then be whoever the character is in the copy. Because more than not, you're not going to be the character in the copy. You're going to be, you know, Sam, the wife next door, as opposed to Deb, the the voice talent. So I have a chance to be two different characters. So with my slate, I do always do a little giggle first, just to get myself in a good mood. (laughs) Hi, Deb Monroe. And it's just simple, quick to the point, but you can understand clearly my first and last name. You can hear that I'm happy and smiling. If you can, implement a joke into your slate, something funny that has something to do with what you're about to do. Fantastic. You know, there was an audition once where they gave away free thong underwear. Yeah, I know. What the heck? But they were giving away free thong underwear. So what I did on my slate was, hey, Deb Monroe looking for the free thong. (laughs) You know, just something silly that grabs their attention a little bit, lets them know I'm paying attention, lets them know I'm confident again. It's all about confidence in that slate. So you need to say your first and last name, a tiny little pause between them, and if you can, do something different. Some of you have some really creative names, so if you can find a way to do it so it's not too cheesy, there's a way to make fun of your name within your slate. Um, you know, I have one, but it doesn't work well in the slates. But just a, a silly example is something like, you know, Deb Monroe couldn't afford the E. You know, you can't spell E in my name. There's no E. Couldn't afford it. Ha, 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 ha. Hopefully you laughed at that one. But as you can see, it's not going to work very well in the slate room or in the slate audition. So you want to find something that works really well. Uh, Deb Monroe, and no, I don't do Dallas. You know, something silly like that. Just... I, I, these are risky, and they're definitely a risk factor to be able to do them, but there are the odd ones that work really well that help you stand out a bit. But for the most part, guys, all you need is a safe slate saying your name, your first and last name, with some personality. Say hello to them. Why not? Remember, these people are listening to audition after audition after audition, and they're real people. So talk to them like they're real people. Most slates sound super artificial, and that's what we're trying to avoid. And one more thing, I've heard this question a lot. Should I slate what I'm reading for? So in other words, should I say Deb Monroe reading for Ford? You know what? This is only my opinion. No one's actually taught this to me or not taught this to me. I believe that if you're doing something like a commercial where there's only one role here, it's only one announcer job available, then you're stating the obvious. Well, of course you're auditioning for Ford or this client wouldn't be getting this audition. However, if you're auditioning for, let's say, the announcer and the woman or the man in the job in the audition, then I would go ahead and slate reading for woman, reading for announcer. Um, Again, I still think it's stating the obvious, but that's the one time I would slate. I would absolutely slate, however, if I was going for multiple characters. So if I'm going to do, you know, there's Chucky and then there's Samantha and Tabitha and Jewel, I will slate each character's name before I voice them so that they can keep them straight. Otherwise, in my opinion, you're just stating the obvious and these clients aren't dumb.
Your name, however, is extremely important in that slate. Even some people will put in their email address or their web address at the end. I don't do that myself, but that's another option. Until next time, everyone, happy slating. Keep it up. Don't forget, don't lose that smile. Love who you are and show it to them. Till next time, www.debsvoice.com.